Ladies and gentlemen, we're back again on the Stephen Sully study. I've got a uh, another street artist in front of me, Marcus Method. I'm really, really fascinated about this space, but predominantly because um, I founded a, a brand back in 2014 called Woodbury House, where I'm sat right now. And we've been working on mostly the Richard Hamilton uh, movement. Um, I've said this plenty of times, sadly he died in 2017, but ever since his death, the market has been going from one strength to the other. And what it's um, allowed me to do is being in this space, I've dovetailed you know, into different artists and talking to different artists and speaking about their, their backgrounds. Um, so a lot of the people I've spoken to are, are predominantly from the state, from New York, um, people like LA2, um, I've spoken to Cope, uh, Crash, Days, I mean the list is fairly endless. And then I started speaking to uh, one of Banks' affiliates, a guy called Black the Rat. And now what I'm trying to do is speak to as many British artists as, as I can because I, I feel in a way many many of them are linked whether it's loosely or whether it's kind of directly and this led me also to you so thank you very much for coming aboard marcus yeah no, no problem so uh let's talk about your market then your style first and foremost um it's when when i look at your style it's quite clear it's yours um i wouldn't ever mistake it for anybody else's so just for the viewers how would you describe your work i'd, I'd say it was sort of coming from a graffiti background but yep. it's quite heavily influenced by like Memphis their sort of stuff they did in the 80s okay the, the pattern based stuff but I didn't really get into it through knowing who they were I sort of saw their influence on 80s 90s and right and was trying to do that sort of thing in graffiti and then found out a bit more about them and you know just uh, yeah I, I think that graffiti kind of street art stuff and also I used to work in architecture so some of the like black lines and really like neatness comes from working there because like the idea is to make things as simple as possible so whoever's reading the drawing can understand it so I started to apply that to artwork yeah as simple as possible to get the idea across. There's, um, I mean, when I look at it, it's, it's uh, very bold, very beautiful. I think it's fantastic stuff. Um, in actual fact, I did interview one guy that I wouldn't say looks like your work, but it's kind of that kind of theme almost, which is a guy called Remy Ruff. I don't, I don't know if you know Remy Ruff. He, he actually done a, um, a collaboration with David Beckham's company recently called uh, High Club, which is the oh, whiskey. Okay. Okay. Um, and he designed one of the bottles, but straight lines when you said the word architecture reminded me of that yeah, yeah. um and he's doing really really well at the moment so um yeah look, listen i think i think street art i think um i think anything in the contemporary street art sector providing you can brand yourself right and obviously yeah, you've got yeah. a work rate and you're quite consistent with what you do i think the world's your oyster so um what what are some of the projects you've been working on uh, recently recently i've been doing quite a bit of stuff with uh, fred aldos which is a art shop based in the north they, okay. they sort of they've been around since like 1880 something but the the sort of younger guys who are now um who are now running it they um they've branched out from their one manchester store they've got sheffield uh, leeds i think so been doing a few collaborations with them um painting their shops and nice in the northern quarter sort of painting all the floor and everything outside of there and you know yeah, things like that. Um, done some stuff with some art festivals in one in Bournemouth. Uh, sort of all their brochure and artwork for their mm. festival. It's not really a street art festival. It's general okay. art art festival kind of thing. Um, some stuff with the Lawn Tennis Association. Do you know, sort yep. of govern tennis yep. in the UK. Uh, did like a collaboration with them quite Good recently. Stuff. So, like a few things like. Yeah, some interesting projects. So, like, I, f I think in 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 the in the era that we're in right now, which is the era of social media, um, I think it's not just enough to be a great artist, for example, or someone who's great at music or great at fashion. You have to be good at your product, but you also have to be very good at marketing yourself. So. With social media then, I know it can be a blessing and a curse. It could be a curse because it can distract people and it can make them feel, you know, sometimes not so good about themselves because they're comparing themselves to other people. But then at the same time, it's a great way of 
generating revenue, getting yourself out there, doing collaborations and connecting with the wider world. How, how have you seen like sort of the, the world of Instagram, Facebook and all these kind of social media channels shaping what you do? I, I think it's sort of changed different times, different sort of thoughts on it. At, at one point I was sort of kind of a bit of a slave to it, you know, like mm. I need to post this many times a day, I need to like this many pictures, yeah, that kind of thing. And that was working for a while. Mm. And I th- I think it is a good tool and it is a it is necessary. I wouldn't want it to go away or anything. But also I think you can get into a rut of just like trying to post for posting sake and creating work for social media's sake rather than creating work for, you know, yeah. other high quality and what you want to do. And yeah. I th- I think since I've sort of stepped back a little bit from trying to create it for Instagram and I'm posting every day or three times a week mm. and just posting the stuff that I think is of a quality that I'm happy with. It's sort of helped my yeah. social media. It's, you know, it's gone up. The interactions have gone up a little bit since I've been concentrating on quality over yeah, yeah. quantity. But I, th- I think say if you were starting or anything and, and you, you use in social media, it's, the, the likes aren't really, I don't know, they're not that important. You know, it's it's sort of hard to, like you said, compare when you're comparing yourself to ho- other people and they've yeah. got 50,000 likes or yeah. even 3,000 and you've got 20. It can be a bit disheartening for people, but I think if you just keep going with it and stuff, it's, it's like anything, isn't it? You've just got to... Well, uh, what I've been saying, uh, like in the last probably couple of years now, is um, your online presence, including social media, is a bit like your modern day CV. Yeah. So, like, <clears throat> if you're going to go in for a new job interview, if you're going to go in for a collaboration, if you're going to raise money for your own brand, business, or venture, they probably nine times out of ten going to jump online and do a little bit of research about you and your company. And if you've got a social presence, that really does help. It's not the yeah. be all, be all and end all, but it definitely does help. So I think it's it's kind of a necessary thing. But again, on the other side of it, just using it for what it's worth, which is, you know, um, posting for business or building your own brand, but then coming away from it, I think that's healthy sometimes, but easier said than done. Oh, definitely. It's, 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 I don't think it's something you, it, at this time you can really come away from fully unless you're sort of, you know, certain level. Like something. blue chip, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's, if, if you're, you need to keep it up and keep, yeah keep doing it and it's definitely a necessary thing but i think the thing with brands jumping on your instagram that's kind of what i was saying what when you're just posting stuff to post it they jump on and they just see yeah some stuff that's not your top stuff it's kind of like people say like your portfolio should be just your top stuff yeah i kind of feel like instagram is similar people go on see the top nine posts and think make an opinion of you of based course. on them so yeah i think you need to sort of for me anyway make the quality the most yeah i think that, thing. i think that's sound advice so um being an artist then um what made you want to become an artist because it is a very very hard profession and a hard sector to to crack you know um to monetize i mean look we I'm very, very fortunate because I get to talk about blue chip artists all the time because I'm dealing with investors. I mean, you've got Hamilton here on the wall, you know, the, some of these pieces now on, on, on in the private domain, they're selling up to a million, million dollars, which is fantastic. Yeah. And when we talk about the Damien Hurst, the Jeff Coons, the Andy Warhols, Jean-Michel Basquiat, the Richard Hamiltons, the Bankses, the, the cause, um, people just seem to think, oh, if I become an artist, I can potentially get to that level and you can definitely at good hard work good good de- dedication promoting yourself and being consistent definitely but it takes a long time most artists though they don't get there they they, they fail yeah. because it becomes a little bit too much for them why did you venture into into be becoming an artist a street artist I basically sort of just i was doing street art doing graffiti then street art and i was working like nine to five like i said in architecture practice and I just hated it I didn't like it it wasn't what I sort of thought I I like to create things and you find yourself sort of not creating and creating someone else's vision so 
I was just getting to a point where I sort of thought, I'm selling a few prints, I'm getting a couple of commissions, I'll, I'll give it a try and just sort of made it my mission to at least make a living out of it. And mm. I think getting to that cause, like you said, Andy Warhol level is sort of obviously, I'm sure most people want that, but um, I think just being able to do something where you can create something like pretty much every day or all the time and create your sort of vision. Yeah. It's like sort of a, a job that I wanted to do and something that I would do anyway. Do you know, I wouldn't, mm. I, I can't see myself ever stopping or, do you know what I mean? It's not like a, a hobby or something that I might fall out of love yeah. with. It's just something that I always have done and always will do. So the opportunity came to sort of try and make it a career and yeah, so I just thought you, you only get sort of one chance, don't you? You might yeah. as well try it rather than regret not trying it. And how old are you now? At 30. 30, yeah, well, you've got pl plenty of time to crack it. Mm. Um, so, like, I mean, um, sometimes there's a bit of a, not taboo subject, but sometimes artists or uh, people in art are a little bit um, cagey about talking about making money from art. Some yeah. people say, you know, you shouldn't be making money for art, it should be uh, from art, you, it should be just about the creativity. But at the same time, if you're an artist... It can't be just about the creativity because it is your make great art, but you you might not make any money and go skin. Yeah. So bar making money and get, having revenue for you, your family and your aspirations and your future, what kind of inspires you to do a piece of work, uh, uh, let's say uh, a piece of art on the uh, on the wall, for example? Um, I think it's sort of like a little bit of like a need to sort of, Create. Create, but it's also a l tiny bit like a look at me kind of thing, do you know? Yeah. Like, I'm I'm not really like an outgoing person, I'd say, do you know, in myself, but there's still that thing in me that wants to sort of get my name out there and people to yeah. know who did it or at least know the name or the style. So it's like, it's like, um, yeah, I know exactly what you mean. So, you know, um, your personality might not be necessarily, look, here I am, this is the person who who I am, but through your work, you can do that. You make a, yeah, you exactly. can make a, a statement. Yeah, yeah, that, that's it. I mean, being able to, to put something in a place where everyone can see it, anyone who walks past at least, yeah. is sort of, how, how else would you do that other than like paying for an advert or something? But yeah. you, you can just go do it people will see what you're doing and you know there's some there's something in there it's probably quite it's not the best quality to have but if you if you say that you don't enjoy that or yeah do it for that reason you prob probably lying or something you know yeah. i think most people thrive off that a little bit people and that's the same with graffiti like getting people to know your name mm. is, is kind of coming from that sort of thing you know so like uh, you have the same sort of benefit as uh the social media aspect on the streets a little bit yeah. so you know when you're uh, putting up some street art it's almost like you're doing a post someone comes yeah, yeah. past <laughs> sees it sees your tag i mean i'll give you one example um they just uh, slightly regenerated uh, just around the corner from here in Rupert Street there's like an alleyway and they put a restaurant and nice nice sort of uh, shops and stuff down there and during that time, when it was a building site, there was an artist called uh, Tom Blackford who, um, over the front of the building site, done this uh, demonised uh, kind of like Mickey Mouse. And it was a really cool piece of art. Yeah. And at the bottom, he tagged his name. I typed it into the internet, found him, found his shop, and I ended up you know, connecting with him. And uh, you know, we'd done a podcast together. He's been down here a few times. Oh, nice. Really, really cool guy. Yeah. And I, felt, I thought to myself... The street art is not something that you're predominantly going to sell. It's a way of advertising yourself, raising your profile, yeah, yeah. creating that status, and then leading people to your social media or to you, and then you can sell some work. I mean, would you say that's that's what it's all about? Um, as well as an, a, cre I, a creative I, outlet? I wouldn't say, like, there's a culture to it, and I wouldn't say culturally that's what it's about, but I would say that's part of it. You know, like, there, there is something you know you put your name on something it does happen you know i painted something some company gets in touch and says oh i've seen this here 
would you like to do something? Um, that does happen. And I think it is sort of, if you're being honest, in the back of your mind, but there is sort of a, a stronger culture that would rely and people would still create it if that didn't exist. You know, if there was no commercial yeah. outlets, yeah, there sure. would be people still definitely doing it. and Just for the sheer love of creating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and just for that sort of, getting your name out there and yeah. sort of even if it wasn't from a financial aspect but I'm not really someone who shies away from that obviously you need to make money if you don't make money what you're going to do and I think sort of if you're an artist trying to come from a working class background what else are you going to do or if, if you want to be an artist you've got to make money you can't just be like yeah I'll just you know create it for the love it's like yeah yeah that's not gonna make you survive is it so yeah so as an artist, yeah. street artist, what would you say is your biggest challenges that you face every single day when you're trying to develop your work? Um, well, I mean, I wouldn't really call myself a street artist as such. I'd, I'd probably just say like visual artist because okay. I, I think there is, like I just said, like the culture of it, there's people doing it more for the culture of it and things. I wouldn't yeah. want to disrespect that because most nights I'm not out putting up yeah my work or anything you know i'm more focused on like creating a big mural or something like that so um but i think like challenges generally are sort of just the, getting the scale that i want to paint at like get the spots with the scale and the the budget or just the the time constraints you know just mm -hmm always trying to I'm always I'm trying to make everything clean and neater as if it's like what, what I'd see as perfect kind of thing you know so I'm always trying to develop my ideas and especially if you're working for clients sometimes there's time boundaries financial boundaries certain things that they want even though I don't really paint anything other than what I paint you know like at the minute there's a few projects I've done that because of lockdown the sort of things I designed two years ago and they're just happening now and maybe I've moved on with that and I, I want to do my newer stuff but you know sort of get obligated to do things that have been put in process like a while ago okay yeah. um is there anyone that uh, inspired you from the art community uh, or or even on the outside of it you know fashion designers music artists uh, athletes is anyone that's you know has really sort of pushed you as an artist and thought you know I would don't want to be them but you know I've gravitated towards some of some of their their achievements. Yeah, I, I think that there's certain people and it's it's not always about their work; it's about more their journey. So like Alexander McQueen, definitely. Um, I interviewed his uh, nephew. I uh, saw that la I, last I saw week. His picture. I, I recognised him. He's, he's he's in the one of the documentaries, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll have to watch that. Episode. Yeah, it comes out in a few weeks' time. Oh, is it not it, out yet? He yeah. was a really, really cool guy. Yeah, um, obviously he lost his uncle Lee, and yeah. um, you know he's he's uh, he he suffered a little bit himself with like mental health and maybe suicidal thoughts. I think that was quite right. you know natural. Yeah, yeah. Um, and now he's you know got his own brand, and um, I think he's going to do really, really well. And I think there's that clear link between him and his him and his. Um, uh, uncle and I think uh, he's got all the foundations he's got all the know-how he's got all the contacts and I think yeah, he yeah. could bec become a pretty pretty force in in the art and fashion sector yeah yeah I mean I think with like Alexander McQueen like the interesting thing about him is how the background he came from and the world he was working in were kind of opposites but he used that to his advantage so he kind of played up to the yeah image you know the sort of working class kind of image he played up to it and made it work for him in a place where you know that kind of person might not necessarily be invited or, or work so I think I think he's he's his, a big he's, he's sort of journey more than anything you know <coughs> and his shows obviously yeah amazing but I wouldn't say they influence me stylistically or anything like yeah. that um and yeah, just people who've done similar things like Paul Smith, for example. Like I know he, he's not always respected as like a designer, but he 
came from a certain background, made it, and he sells clothes. You know, like he, s- he sells. Yeah, he's got a big brand. Yeah, and, and he's sort of just like come from his, his journey, sort of like I respect it. And yeah, it's kind of like an inspiring sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I just think anyone that is, you know, uh, set set a goal and a vision and they're working towards it no matter how far or how close they are to that end result you just got to uh, 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 admire them um, and there's always going to be pitfalls there's always going to be challenges there's always going to be setbacks and there's more importantly going to be people that say you can't do it and I just think if you can keep on persevering and stay true to it and just be hungry I, f- I think you can achieve anything and I think you want and um, I think at the age of 30, 30 years of age I think you've got so much time to develop so much time to grow and there's going to be so much new technology is going to come through which is actually going to help artists you know get their their works out to the wider world what's your take on the old NFT subject I, I don't know really I mean it's it's interesting isn't it it's like as far as I understand it, I don't. I don't know. I mean, I'm not sure. Is there longevity in it? Is there not? Is it? Do you? I don't know. What What do you think? Do you think like you, do you well, own it? You own it, but is it? Yeah, I mean, uh, there's no getting away that uh, the world is evolving, and I think a lot of things are going to go dis- digital. Um, I'm halfway through a Sotheby's art and finance course, and funny enough, this co- conversation came up and. Uh, the president of Sotheby's, but from, um, I think it was South America, a lady called Nina, um, she she was speaking about NFTs, and I think she hit the nail on the head. She said, um, it's derived from cryptocurrency, yeah. uh, uh, roughly about three years ago, almost. And she said, we are, as a brand, Sotheby's getting into NFTs, clearly, because there's big hype, there's big uh, interest, and there's a lot of energy. So you can't deny that there is a real market out there for it. But at the same time, in, in her experience as looking at art as an investment, she believes it's moved way too quickly, and she believes it's a bit of a bubble at the moment. Yeah. Now, bubbles can burst, and they can be rebuilt again. We all know that. Oh, you know, yeah, yeah. property, stocks and shares, collectibles, anything. Yeah. But I would agree with her, it's moved very, very quickly. And even still today, I have conversations where NFTs and then people say, yeah, I know it's a great market. I know you can make a huge amount of money off the back end of it. But why would someone buy a piece of art, digital form, for $60, $70 million or whatever it may be? I mean, I personally, I don't think I'm, I'm educated enough on the NFTs or appreciate them. So if I had 100 million, for example, and I was going to spend... 100 million on a piece of art would i go for an nft probably not yeah. i would probably want to go for a jean-michel basket canvas or a whole heap of hambletons or andy warhol for example but maybe that's just me maybe i'm just you know i still need to be educated a bit more on it well that's the same as me really i wouldn't say i know enough <laughs> about it to to comment further than really what i said you know what i mean it's it's sort of really new and I yeah. guess you don't know where it's going to go. Like, yeah. I've seen people sort of compare it to when music went from physical to download, but, do you know, like, when yeah. you had to buy each song kind of thing. But I'd, I don't know if it's the same as that, really. it's Yeah. It's well, only time I think will tell. I do think the, the, the younger generation who are used to being more on their tablets and, you know, using using crypto and stuff like that, I think they might appreciate it a bit more. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, like if anyone started monetizing it in a very, very good way, uh, I'm pretty sure they will become a fanatic of it and uh, you know learn a bit more and, and it will become a bit more of the normal. But let's just see, t- time will tell. Yeah, definitely. Um, yourself as an artist then, um, so so uh, just going back to the sort of grassroots, I know you said you was in college, you were doing architecture and stuff like that and it wasn't really your bag. Where, where, so w- when was that? Was you, was you like 17, 18, 20 years of age, roughly? I, I was like, I was working in a practice, like actually working in architecture as a uh, architectural technician from being about 18. So I did an HNC while I was working there um, until I was about, I think I was about 26. Okay. Maybe 25. Okay. So I, I, I like actually give it a good go, I think. <laughs> yeah. I like actually worked in it, worked on projects and stuff and 
so did that sort of life as a dedicated artist then so you've been doing it for about five years yeah 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 the reason why i say that is because obviously you've been five years into it as far as i can see you're making you know a really really good brand for yourself and uh, again i love your work i think it's great i think your website looks really really clean and refreshing so what does this next five years look like for you five or ten years what collaborations where do you want to work are you going to go abroad maybe are you going to go into more clothing merchandise is there anything like that i think ideally i'd like to get more into creating like studio work like I've got a studio fairly recently and trying to go a bit more into that as as well as the collaborations. I'd, I'd like to do sort of clothing collaborations mainly, like maybe some... Because you've done one with the Woods Co. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With my yeah. cousin. Yeah. yeah. I, didn't, I actually I didn't got one of the T-shirts. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, a yeah, white, white one, yeah. Oh, nice, nice. Really, really cool. Yeah, yeah. Like I've, I've, done a, I've done a few sort of collaborations like that or with with a few sort of not small clothing brands but you know not yeah not, not big big ones um is that what you like to venture into like let's say an adidas or a nike or puma someone like that yeah I, I i would i mean i i would like maybe to do some stuff with sort of like a norse projects universal works yeah would would i would be like cool one i'd want to do yeah you know, like i'd, I'd like them sort of brands I'd definitely like to do in my head. It'd sort of be cool to do them and then do Nike or Adidas or something like mm. But I think sort of you've got to be careful which collaborations to do, do you know, to, to keep on that path. You don't want to sort Brand of... Brand alignment, yeah. Yeah, exactly, yeah, definitely. Um, and yeah, that, that sort of thing would be great. I mean there's certain like shoe companies who i'd like i wouldn't necessarily even want to design the shoes but you know maybe like a colorway with and do the sort of branding for that yeah. campaign with build a set with my stuff kind of thing like they're all they're always things i've wanted to do for a while and would would like to do yeah have you ever done stuff abroad like in galleries or with organizations or is it something you would like to do uh, it's something i'd like to do it the, f the things I've I've always done like with shows and stuff is just like put them on myself, you know, just just sort of hire a space and and just do it that way. But yeah, I, w I would definitely like to to work with galleries and things. And yeah, yeah, I think working on them studio paintings, sculptures, that sort of stuff is is sort of the thing I'm trying to work on at the minute. Do you know, yeah. like that's like get get my prints a little bit better you know so i've i've been doing like a3s and stuff do some a1s a0s and 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 focus on some big paintings you know and and yeah that that's sort of the stuff i'm working on in the background at the minute okay yeah. what is your price point from limited editions to your original work i mean um sort of a limited edition like print for example you mean yeah um yeah. an a3 I, I've been doing them quite cheap, like thirty or some around that sort of yep. price. Um, but then I, th the next ones that were coming out, I was looking more around hundred, but they're going to be either A one or maybe A zero. But I, I don't know. Okay. Uh, well, even if they're not specifically that yep. size, roughly that size. You know. And what about your? Do you do canvas work? Yeah, uh, I I do, but. That's another thing. Since I've got the studio, is something I want to heavily on. push. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I wouldn't. The ones I've done in the past, price wise, they've really ranged from like five hundred to a thousand, three hundred. You know, yeah. Being dependent on size, and it's not something I've really focused on. You know, to cre to create a body a body of work that mm. was specifically for. A, a show I, I think the last show i did that for was like 2017 maybe okay. so it, it's sort of the commission work has been like kind of keeping me yeah busy um but that's something i want to go back to and, and work on a bit more yeah yeah so commission work t who's your typical sort of buyer collector um well i mean the commission work mainly i was like talking about was more like businesses so okay you know it 
<coughs> there's like a, a a company that are like one of the top people who modify VW transporters. Do you right. know like they're like the ones to go to? Yeah. So I di- I've done like all of their sort of like headquarters and and things like that. I've done a few clothing brands, um, all the way down to like. Uh, not restaurants, but sort of like bar kind of places. But the sort of main clients I'd say were like medium sized businesses, a few a few big businesses. Like I've done a little bit of stuff for G Star and a little bit for some other clothing brands. Um, but yeah, it's it's, it's kind of a, a big range. Nice. Do you ever get people on Instagram hit you up for a commission, like an original? To be, you mean like a painting or yeah. something? Uh, yeah, sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Um, Probably every few months sort yeah. of thing. But well, this is the importance of, again, building up your, your profile. So eventually then the big problem that hopefully you will have is you're, you're being inundated with it, which yeah. which must happen all the time to some of the biggest artists in the world. Um, talk me through, like, if you were to do, uh, let's say, uh, a piece of art on, on, the, on the street somewhere, yeah. like a mural, how do you go about starting that? Do you freehand and go over to it and then just... just, just paint or develop your art or, or do actu- you plan it the actual painting of it um generally these days i'll plan it i'll do a sketch probably on like photoshop Illustrator okay. or whatever do a digital version use the color palettes of the paint i'm going to use order that specific paint then mark it out in chalk or something like that and even sort of tape the outline sometimes depending on mm. where it is what the surface is like and just basically recreate what i created digitally on on the wall right yeah do you ever have uh, issues about trying to get wall space um a, li- a little bit sometimes it's sort of it, it depends if, if we're just painting to paint it, it can be a bit tricky at times um we like i used to paint a lot of sort of abandoned places them sort of things and there was a little bit of a scene with that especially like i don't know down here but up north there, there's a lot of abandoned like factories and things at one point there was so we was painting that and a lot of photographers was, were going there and sort of <coughs> documenting it documenting it and that's how people were seeing it mainly you know rather than with their eyes it was sort of yeah the people who were documenting it and we were doing obviously posting them ourselves and things so I think in terms of just going out and painting, not a commission, uh, it can be quite tricky to get a spot that yeah. would be desirable to paint yeah. at times. Yeah. Do you ever do uh, any collaborations with any other artists? Yeah, yeah, I do. Um, not as regular as I used to, but yeah, I, I, I still do like... Um, the. Yeah, if, if someone we get talking on Instagram or something and we'll we'll go and go and paint something and yeah, it, it's good like that. I mean sometimes those things are just designed on the spot, you know, we'll just yeah you do this and we'll just work it out as we go. So yeah. then them things can be pretty like fun to do. That's good. And you come out with something that you might not have thought of. Yeah. So being in the art market and obviously being an artist, um, what's your view on how the market is evolving and morphing? Have you got a view on it? Have you got can you can you see a direction it's going towards, or or are you just in the moment just painting your own stuff? And you don't really look at the general market of art. Um, I, I think it'd be difficult to say from like sort of my point of view i'm not really in the sort of gallery space or anything so i think i wouldn't really be qualified to comment on that but in terms of like sort of the more what i do like people who've evolved from street art i think there's a real sort of group of people who maybe came from graffiti or street art who are now I don't. I, I don't even know if there's a name for them. There is a book about it. Th- uh, there's like a magazine issue of. Uh, I don't know if it's is it IDN or something. Th- okay. One of the magazines and it's it's sort of like artists working across a broad spectrum of mediums, but creating the same stuff. So maybe everyone's doing digital. Everyone's painting walls. Everyone's doing like studio work. Mm. 
and it, it's just sort of this like scene of people who are quite free to work in any medium and and they're creating their thing and i think there's a lot of examples of that people who've come from that yeah. scene who are now branching into i don't know if you call it the mainstream art world but the art world yeah beyond just street art yeah whatever Okay, so um, I know you're you're here, obviously, to do the podcast today. So thank you very much for your time. Uh, you got anything else planned whilst you're in London? No, to be honest, um, I'm I'm I've been in my Airbnb. I've been working on these prints that I'm working on. They they need to go to the printers, um, like at the end of this week. So yeah, I just I've been working on them. I've I've been working on commissions back to back for like I don't know a couple of months. So it was nice just to have a couple of days just chilling yeah. out of the way from other projects and just work on my my prints and stuff while I was just on my laptop. Good stuff. Chilling. Good. Yeah. Where can people find you then, mate, if they wanted to check out your work and follow your journey? Um, on Instagram, it's Marcus underscore method or my website is marcusmethod.com. Cool. Um, I always ask my, my, my guests um, uh, this, this take on my... Um, catchphrase which is called be happy never content i come up with it a few years ago when i first developed my my, my sales company and it's like a mantra i try and stick stick by yeah. can't i don't always stick by it uh <laughs> but it's a reminder that i should yeah. if i were to ask you marcus method what is your interpretation of be happy never content i, I guess it's once you're content with what you're doing you stop trying to progress and then you might fall off so don't do that but be happy on the journey that's it maybe <laughs> good stuff um this is going to be out in a few weeks time uh it's going to be on youtube my podcast um i'm al al also going to post it on my social media uh once it's out please uh comment either re re review and um definitely share it with friends and family and um thanks again for your time marcus it's been really really good thanks. nice one mate cheers